Hey, what's up everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so I'm sitting here or standing here waking up uh, 6.30 in the morning. As you can see, it's still dark. I like the dark, so that's nothing to me. But uh, I woke up this morning uh, thinking Laker basketball. Uh, very happy that we got Dennis Schroeder back uh, yesterday. Congratulations to Dennis Schroeder on uh, returning back to the Los Angeles Lakers. It's a congratulations situation because we know his circumstance and we understand how important it is that he keep his career going. I was worried he was going to have to go home to Germany or, or something like that to play ball at a professional level when that's not necessary for where he's at in his career, right? I think a lot of times when people run into these issues that he ran into with free agency, it's usually because they haven't played well or they got um, issues off the court that makes it so people don't want to sign him, stuff like that. He doesn't have any of those issues at all. None to my knowledge at all. So it's one of those situations where it's, um, it's, it's really important that he just get back on the basketball floor in a situation that allows him to be himself. <laughs> and that's it. Because Houston didn't have that for him. Houston didn't need him to play high, at a high level. Houston didn't need him to play any minutes um, at all, really. They, they had a, a situation where their, their focus was the children over there, the kids. Um, I think... And when you look at the Boston situation, as we talked about as well, uh, they had a log jam at the point guard position. Their team was already set and imagined and complete when they added him to it. So it was one of them situations where they just didn't have the role for the guy. Um, so with the way I see the Lakers situation is we're going to have a good role for him if we can continue to uh, just shuffle the roster around. We're going to have to get rid of some guards to make this roster um, provide that type of look for Dennis <laughs> because right now I just think we have a bit of a log jam at that point guard shooting guard position now I don't have a problem with that at all because I think the more guards we have on this roster uh, the more balance we have because what we don't have is many wings so it's just guards and bigs that's it so you had better have a lot of guards because <laughs> you don't have any wings so it's one of the situations where it's like I think now if I'm gonna ask Rob to do anything is to just try to swing a wing. Since we've gotten rid of Stanley Johnson, since we got rid of THT, which I don't have a problem with necessarily, even though I would have loved to keep Stanley Johnson, in the grand scheme of things, I'm very excited about Patrick Beverly. And so I've just moved on. Uh, Stanley is a place, that player that I think we can find another one of those. You know, And I like Stanley a lot, but um, it's one of those situations where I'm just going to be like, okay, his skill set and what he can provide, it, it can be found. So even though you didn't want to give him up, <laughs> It's not like he's a one, you know, once in a lifetime player, unfortunately. And I mean that with respect. I'm just trying to assess what I see and how I think this ultimately was worth doing. Because we, even though we didn't want to give up Stanley, we understood THT's contract wasn't very good, so that was going to be expensive. We understand that Patrick Beverly is coming off a fantastic year uh, with a, with eighteen million dollars. I think it was eighteen million dollar expiring contract. Something pretty expensive expiring. So we knew Patrick is a guy that we we wanted on this team. We know that it was going to cost us to get him. And we know that that's okay because I imagine the Los Angeles Lakers plan on signing him past this upcoming season. I hope we do. I, I really want us to keep him too. So and that trade is fine so long as we have plans to keep him Patrick Beverly a part of this squad past this season, in my humble opinion. Uh, so I'm excited about our guard situation. As I said yesterday, we're a little small, but that's not something that scares me because we don't need our guards to be the focal point of what we do we need them to be complementary pieces to ad and braun <laughs> and i believe we have that dynamic in place braun and ad are going to take the bulk of the of the shots obviously lebron's going to handle the bulk of the basketball russell westbrook yeah. i'm still of the mindset that he's not a part of this thing not as it pertains to him being on the court now off the court of course he's, he's one of our guys until we until otherwise, he's been a consummate pro. He's, he's, he's very much poised to start the season with us. All of these different things are real. But what I'm telling you is, as I imagine our basketball team, he doesn't have, he, he's, not a, he's not a piece. He's not a piece. And I don't mean that as in I want to be disrespectful to, to Russell Westbrook and, and all of that. No, I'm looking at how the team is constructed, and I'm telling you, he's not imagined in it <laughs> at all. His piece ain't there. Um at all so i don't know if 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 the rest of laker nation sees it like i see it 
but this is a situation where if you're looking at the cohesive structure of a basketball team, you look at how your rotation is going, Russell is not a part of that rotation if this team is being run properly. Dennis Schroeder's going to need about 22 minutes a game. Um, Austin Reeves going to need over 20 minutes a game. Kendrick Nunn's going to need over 18 minutes a game. Do you see what I'm saying? There's no minutes for some of these guys. Um, obviously, Dia, um, Patrick Beverly's going to be in heavy rotation. <laughs> heavy rotation. He, there's not going to be too many sets that I don't think he'll be a part of, to be honest with you, in terms of our lineups. Um, because we are a team who is going to be relying upon his defense and his um, veteran presence in a role-playing situation, I do believe he's going to be a part of a lot of what Darvin Ham does. A lot. So I'd expect he, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis are probably the players we see the most on the basketball floor this season. <laughs> As you can see, the Lakers are pretty much backing their entire marketing campaign behind Patrick Beverly. <laughs> they got him wearing our new uh, uh, city jerseys, I believe it is, or statement. I think it's the city jerseys, which I really like. They remind me of a Hollywood Knights purple and black kind of thing. Good job on the jerseys there. And it just looks like he is our identity. Obviously, LeBron James and Anthony Davis are the superstars, the face, right? But to me, it seems like Jeannie and, and the guys are saying, look, Patrick is going to be our voice, our face, and our our identity for this particular season. And so uh, with that said, I think the, back, the playing time is going to back that. And I'm on board with it. I'm on board with it. After what I saw from him in Clipperland, after what I saw from him in Timberwolf land, that's a leader. That's a leader from a role-playing position. And he's, in my mind, redefines what greatness is to be considered in my humble opinion and why do i say that i say that because when i look at patrick beverly he is not a great player he's a role player but what he brings to the table is greatness from within his role and i became aware of that and clear of that when he was with the timberwolves leading that bunch those kids were being led by that man when he said he had his own team Again, same dynamic as last year. Obviously, that's Ant-Man's team. Obviously, that's Cat's team. Obviously, D'Lo holds big weight there. But, but, he was the identity there. That was, he was the reason why they had the fire that they had in their belly. The reason why they were going out there making the playoffs the way that they did, in my opinion, was because that man was rostered and he was pushing them to their, to their, to their limits. <laughs> so, I believe that that is exactly what we're asking him to do for us. LeBron James, obviously a natural born leader, obviously one of the greatest players in the world, but his personality is not that of someone who's going to step out and do that thing. That's not his personality. Anthony Davis, same thing. Those guys are superstars, but that ain't their personality that's going to step out front and make the other team feel you. Nah, they're going to do that with their basketball play, not with their mouths, not with their demonstrative behavior. That's going to be Patrick's job. He's going to be our Draymond. So he's going to be our Marcus Smart. And I think he's built for it. That's who he is. That's exactly what I'm trying to explain to you. When you talk about greatness, I don't remove greatness from Draymond. Is Draymond the greatest player? No. But what he does, he provides greatness within what he does. And I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that. Is it the prettiest style of play? Is it Kyrie or something? No. But what he brings to the table, you must respect. And it's caused other teams to lose championships. That's what Draymond has done. He has cost other teams opportunities to win because of what it is that he brings to his team i think patrick beverly can provide that same dynamic to a win now situation in a different way i'm not comparing the two players very different styles but they do provide that role playing greatness on the defensive end that is infectious it makes greater players play better he's like a battery in the back of greatness he makes greater players play greater and that is ultimately what I think Patrick Beverly is going to provide. Anthony Davis is going to be a more aggressive player because Patrick Beverly's down there. LeBron James is going to be a more aggressive player because Patrick Beverly's down there. Austin Reeves, it goes on and on and on. Our guys are going to be feeding off of what Patrick brings to the table. And that is why you paid such a hefty price tag for him. And I believe it'll translate whether he's on the court or not. That's the beautiful thing about it. Even if for some reason he's not playing, him on the sidelines, just clapping his hands, making sure people hear his voice, telling people what he sees, talking to the young guys. That is going to hold 
massive amounts of value on this year's basketball club because it doesn't require Darvin Ham to focus on all of that, LeBron James to focus on all of that, or anybody else. He can be the guard dog, the, the watchdog, and, and the drill sergeant for Darvin Ham. And with the young players that we have, I think that's going to be a good thing. It's a very good thing. So I'm super excited about Pat Bev. Very excited about Dennis Schroeder, especially at $2 million. This makes us a very dangerous team. Very dangerous. You know what I mean? And when you consider what those two attacking guards are going to do, both offensively and defensively, respectively, and you still got to deal with the rest of what we have, <laughs> Patrick Beverly and Dennis Schroeder are going to give you problems on certain nights. I can see it. I can totally see a situation where Patrick Beverly and Dennis Schroeder were player tonight in various games, right? Anthony Davis played, LeBron James played, but those two made the biggest impact and ultimately one player of the game or players of the game. That's the type of thing I'm expecting. They're going to have huge impacts on this team, huge roles on this team, depending on how we shuffle the roster around. So if we're doing things correctly, we will empower Dennis Schroeder and get him back up to the 16 to 18 point a game player, 16.6 of rebounds, four assists. If we can get nights like that out of Dennis Schroeder, we're going to be a dangerous basketball club. Very dangerous. Uh, so uh, it's also going to be important that he uh, he be an efficient three-point shooter for us. I think his three shot is much more important this season than it was in the seasons um, in the season that he was with us. Uh, because we're so deficient shooting the ball this year, we didn't have that issue at that time. We had Avery Bradley shooting at a high level. We had other guys as well at that time shooting the ball. This year, we're going to need Dennis Schroeder to actually shoot above 36% from three. Now, I don't know what his three-point shooting percentage is. I don't remember. He seemed to hit enough of them. It wasn't really his thing, but he hit enough of them. He's going to have to be uh, willing, willing for us to to be a, to be a, a three point shooter at times. I'm not saying park it behind our arc and try to be Steph, but uh, you know, attempt those, attempt them when when it makes sense, because <laughs> we need those shots attempted while he's on the floor. So. Yeah, that's that's it, man. That's that's what I'm seeing there. Just just really really intrigued by our guard situation. I do wonder what Kendrick Nunn's role is going to be. I do wonder what uh, what Lonnie Walker's role going to be. Can those guys slip into the three? Does it make us better if they have to? Uh, I'm not sure. You know, I, I'm I'm of the mindset that we just have have to continue to to trade. And now that we've picked up Dennis Schroeder at two point six million dollars, I firmly believe. But the Los Angeles Lakers are in a position to now be a little, or if not a lot, more aggressive in deals. Uh, do I expect anything to get done? And I'm silent because it's tricky to answer that fully. I think I think something could get done if the Lakers find a deal that doesn't require them to lose their two picks. Maybe they'd be willing to move one of them. Um, depending on what they think will be possible later on. Uh, meaning they're not going to give away anything they think they're going to need. <laughs> Unless they're fully committed to the deal that's in front of them, as to which there would be no deal afterward. So my opinion is, even if the Lakers do a deal for one pick, uh, um, once they get rid of that pick, there's a good chance that with any other deals that they were trying to make later on, become damn near impossible. So we're probably going to need both picks to get whatever deal done. So the next the the next deal we make should be the best deal we make if we're going to involve those two picks. Now, I firmly believe that we should be shopping second round picks. Kendrick Nunn. Um, you know, if there's some cash considerations or some trade exceptions, we should be trying to shop those right now. That's 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 what we should be shopping. So do I think something get done? If it's involving something other than them two picks and stuff like that, yeah. Yep. Kendrick Nunn, I could see being moved. Maybe some some cash considerations, second round picks if we have a Rondo exception or something like that. I don't know what all we have in that way. But that other stuff other than them two picks, if it ain't a part of what we're trying to do this season, I could totally see us uh, trying to improve and getting ourselves a wing or um, – yeah, that's pretty much all we really need is a wing. I mean, we need we need a small forward who can play some defense and shoot a three point shot, three and D, wing. That's what we need. Um, so that's that's what I'm looking at. Lakers got the bigs. I have no problem with our big situation. Very excited about all the centers that we brought back. Uh, 
point guard position looks good. Obviously, we never lose sight of what we really want, which is Kyrie Irving on this channel, BDL44. That's all I really want for this season. I think, I think we're still in play for that. Obviously, we talk about that so much that I'm tired of saying it. But I do want that seed to be planted in just about every Laker video I do. Because those two picks, for my money, at this point, the best value for that, for us, is still Mr. Kyrie Art. Um, to the second. Now, like I said, we're holding our picks not just with the intent of making that specific move, even though I am. I think, I think the responsibility of our GM and our front office is to think bigger than that to hold your picks for whatever may open up. And if it happens to be Kyrie Irving, you're excited about that. But something else could open up for the Lakers. And just the same, you hold your picks because of that possibility. Because we don't know what could open up. You know, you there are players in this league right now who are in their situations, who are about to start the season. They have absolutely no idea that in a couple of weeks, they're going to want the hell out of there. It's the truth. Right now, there's somebody in the NBA, woke up this morning, completely fine with his situation. He's excited about starting training camp. The, the day is going well. Hopefully he has a great day. But what I'm telling you is, when that basketball goes up, some things are going to happen. Games are going to get lost. Things are going to happen. And the guy who's woke up this morning feeling good about his situation, he ain't going to want to be there then. Whether that be three weeks from now, from the season starting, three months from within the season starting, that person's going to realize that his best place is somewhere else. And when that happens, we're going to have the two picks in hand. That's what I'm here to tell you. Now, I personally believe that player is going to be Kyrie Irving. I do believe that. I think he's the, the player that you can obviously see that being the case. But I don't think he's the only one. I don't think that. I don't think that because that's not real in terms of the NBA. The NBA is a ever-moving entity all into itself. Meaning, as soon as stuff starts moving, things start changing. As things start changing, organically, simply, naturally, people start changing their opinions about where they're at. So, that's why, I, I, after watching this enough times, making the mistake of saying, let's do something now, and then seeing how being patient would have worked in the NBA, I am now of the mindset. That patience is the better option in this league. Waiting too long is a thing, so you don't want to wait too long for anything. But just because you waited too long for the thing that you're waiting for does not mean you waited too long for the thing that could open up later on. And that's what I'm saying. That is literally the point. Yes, we're waiting for Kyrie Irving. But I'm not certain Evan Mobley won't, walk, won't open up tomorrow. I'm not certain Anthony Edwards won't open up tomorrow. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Not to say that that's real because it's not. But just because it's not real today doesn't mean it won't be real six months from now because three months ago katie wanted out okay things changed <laughs> if you would have told me when katie was playing against the boston celtics in the in, in the playoffs that he was going to be leaving brooklyn i'd have laughed at you i'd have laughed at you i'd have like yeah right but here we are <laughs> so you know i do believe that he's rescinded that trade you know, that trade request is off the table. So as I say, here we are, that means he's back home and everything's fine. Nothing's changed. But what I'm telling you is things have changed so much and fluctuated back and forth to where you can say. It's a good, logical thing to think that something else may open up too. So KD opened up and closed over the last three months in terms of his availability. You could have gotten him and now no longer can get him. Just in a matter of three months. So if we're sitting here with our tunnel vision only on Kyrie Irving like myself, because I do. Or if you have tunnel vision on maybe the indie deal or the Utah deal and you have your mind, you want Bogdanovich, you better realize that something else may open up, if not will open up, when the season starts and players start shuffling around and realizing where they're at isn't where they want to be. Teams start realizing the players that they have isn't who they thought they had. And so those things just are natural occurrences. And all you got to do is wait Wait for the one you're waiting for. Wait for something to open up. And when it does, boom, you got your picks. Here, I'm a player in the game. Check off the Lakers. We have what you need to get that desirable thing up off of you. But if we give it away for Bogdanovich and Clarkson and, and Beasley, um, we won't have it. 
And when it's time for us to get what we want to get, we'll be trying to put together Clarkson, Beasley, and, U and anything else we got from Utah as to which it won't get it done. That's the point. Those assets aren't worth what we're trading them for if we were to do a deal like that. So once you get those pieces, you ain't gonna be able to flip them for anything. Because we don't have our picks, it is very important that we don't do deals like that. So, so far so good, man. I like what Rob is doing. Like I said, everything I'm seeing is pointing in the direction I would want us to go in. We're not doing any of this stuff I don't like seeing thus far. Um, I wasn't in love with the Patrick Beverly trade on paper, but now that we're on the other side of it, I don't have any regrets. That's the strange thing about certain trades. Yes, you hate it beforehand, but once you've accepted that you've given up what you've given up, now you realize what you have and you're super happy about it. So that's where I'm at with the Patrick Beverly trade. I'm happy about him being here. So however we got him, I'm at peace with. Um, so that's that's where I'm at with it, man. DS. Dennis Schroeder, DSG, I forget what his handler name is down there with Twitter and stuff, but uh, Dennis Schroeder is going to be a Laker now. Patrick Beverly, a Laker now. This is great. Now we await for the next ball to drop. Um, and I don't, I don't have any inclination, as I've already said. No inclination. But I would want us to possibly package something other than second picks, them two picks, and continue to retool, maybe get us a small forward of some sort. <laughs> You know what, I'd really love to see us acquire a guy like Cam Reddish right now. That would be that would be a piece that would fit perfect. Just come in, play some defense, small forward, come in, create for himself, hit some threes here and there, get back on the other side of the ball, play more defense. That's the type of player we need. Super talented, low price. If we can get him, I think that puts us in a much more advantageous position uh, than we're in right now. Now, he's going to cost us, but I heard he wants out of New York. He wants out of New York. So my thing is, if for some reason we can find a way to get him without giving up them two picks, um, if there's any way we can do that without giving up stuff that we like, like Austin Reeves or something like that, um, maybe Kendrick Nunn and some other stuff, if we could ca package that and somehow land Cam Reddish, that would be the ideal next move for me. That would be the ideal next move for me. Get us that defensive small forward who's talented, cheap uh, at price. That's the move. Um, Actually, we probably need two of those guys. <laughs> we don't need just one. We need two of them. But let's focus on getting one of them. And uh, that that would be that would be the way to complete the team, in my opinion. Make sure that guy can shoot some threes too. And then as the season starts with them two picks, um, we let things happen. We let things happen. You let the, let the pieces fall where they may. You wait. You wait. You wait. You wait. You let guys play. You manage your basketball team. Let Darvin Ham get the synergy going. And then when you get the opportunity to. When Brooklyn comes around and realizing what their situation actually is versus what it is that they're telling people it is, then they will make a decision on whether or not they want to pay or trade Kyrie Irving. That's going to happen. I see the same exact situation. I've mentioned him a million times with Jakob Pertl in San Antonio. Exact same situation. Not to say I want that player. I don't, but that is the exact same situation. Um, and we can try to get San Antonio to rope him into any deal that we make. So if for some reason we need his value, I would try to get San Antonio as a third team with that piece because they do need to move him or pay him. So that's something to think about if you're Rob Palenka. Like, yo, San Antonio's over there with Jacob Perlo, and they must make a decision on him. They must. And I wonder if Brooklyn have any interest in him at all. But anyway, that's how I'm thinking. So, yeah, man, I'm about ready to start up my day, get some breakfast going. It's the Kobe Minute 24th. So I think I'll end it there, man. Thank you all for watching BDL44. I'm out.